No one likes it when things go wrong. When all your hard work and invested resources come crashing back to earth or don't even get off the ground. Usually, the cause is some otherwise insignificant piece of hardware. This SpaceX rocket died in flight because of an inferior third-party support brace. The Antares rocket died because of a turbo pump explosion. And several Starship prototypes have been lost due to a quick disconnect failure or an engine fire. It would be easy to get discouraged at this point, to assume that it's just too easy to lose everything and give up. But the strength of your character is not determined by what you do when things go right, but by how hard you fight for your dream when things go wrong. Hello and thanks for listening. Welcome to the Terran Space Academy. We would like to thank all of our supporters for helping us prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Today we want to talk about how to deal with the inevitable failures and setbacks we will all experience. And we would like to give credit to a very recent example of how to make the best of a bad situation. Astra Aerospace is a small company founded in 2016 by Chris Kemp and Adam London. Mr. Kemp was the chief technology officer at NASA, which is saying a lot, and was the founder of OpenStack, which is a virtual server company. Adam London is just as accomplished. Having invented several rocket technology innovations for both NASA and DARPA, DARPA is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. You don't get to work there if you don't know what you're doing. Adam brought a team of brilliant engineers with him to Astra, and these two seem well qualified to lead a rocket company. By 2017, Astra had built a rocket factory in Alameda, California, putting to good use part of the shutdown Alameda Naval Air Station. Astra has built and tested several rockets. These are all RP-1 liquid oxygen systems. Astra rockets use five Delphine engines. The Delphine engines have battery-powered pumps. These are often called electric turbo pumps. But if you don't use a turbo, it's just an electric motor and centrifugal pump. These engines put out 28 kilonewtons of thrust each for a total of 140 kilonewtons. The Delphine engines are 3D printed out of Inconel super alloy. If you want to learn more about Inconel and other super alloys, please review this lesson. 3D printing allows Astra to make the Delphine engine with intricate cooling channels that run up the bell and combustion chamber, starting here in this purple cap and around the bottom through multiple channels that run back up to the top before looping back to the fuel injectors on top. This type of internal structure is only possible with 3D printing and creates an equal pressure cooling system with no external parts. It is so efficient that the engine needs no internal insulators. This is an impressive design. Astra uses two-stage rockets, with the second stage being powered by an ether engine. This is a simpler, pressure-fed RP-1 engine with a little less than 3,000 newtons of thrust. Rocket 1 launched on the 20th of July, 2018 from Astra's Pacific Spaceport Complex in Alaska. It was a foggy day and not much could be seen. After 27 seconds of flight, something went wrong and the rocket fell back to the ground, landing within the perimeter fence of the spaceport. No one was injured and Astra went back to work. Rocket 2 was built using the same basic design and was launched on 29 November 2018 from the same pad as Rocket 1. After 30 seconds of flight, a complete engine failure seems to have occurred and the vehicle hit the ground just outside the fence. Both Rocket 1 and Rocket 2 were simple test vehicles. They used mass simulators and had no second stage engine. The Ether engine was still in development. Rocket 3.0 was built and tested, but it had an issue with sensors for the guidance, navigation, and control systems, and its flight was delayed. It was 11.6 meters tall with a diameter of 1.32 meters and had a planned payload of up to 150 kilograms that could reach a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit. Rocket 3.0 was test fired at Castle Airport in California and was prepared for launch from the Pacific Spaceport. This rocket had three CubeSats and was competing for the DARPA launch challenge. On 23 March 2020, as the rocket was being prepared for launch, 
a detanking valve stuck open. The rocket caught fire and was destroyed. The payload had not yet been loaded. Rocket 3.1 was built and launched on September 2020. 30 seconds after liftoff, a guidance system failure caused the rocket to go off course, and the flight was terminated by the range safety officer. Astro went back to work. Rocket 3.2 was launched on 28 August 2021. This was the fourth launch, and it crossed the Kármán line, officially getting into space, reaching an altitude of 390 kilometers. A propellant mix failure on the second stage caused it to fail at reaching a stable orbit. This rocket came very close, but did not quite make it. This sounds like a lot of failures, five in fact. But understand that the only way to completely avoid failure when you're building a new rocket system is to never launch it at all, which is called the SLS Blue Origin Solution. Trademark and copyright pending. Let's look back at something. The SpaceX Falcon 1 failed three times. The first rocket suffered a fuel leak due to a corroded bolt and fell back near the launch site, like Astro Rockets 1 and 2. The second suffered a second stage control anomaly, just like Astro Rocket 3.2, while the third had a separation failure. What does all this have to do with SpaceX and Starship? SpaceX would not have had the funds for a fifth launch if something had gone wrong with the fourth. That means no Falcon 9, no Dragon flights to the ISS, and no Starship. Success always seems predestined, once you have it. The last launch attempt by Astra was on 28 August 2021, just a few days ago. Here is rocket 3.3. It is 1.5 meters taller than 3.2 and 3.1, and it has a diameter of 1.32 meters. I've had trouble finding the mass, but I'm going to say around 11,426 kilograms, or about 11.43 metric tons. I'll explain why in a moment. Rocket 3.3 is on the pad, ready for launch. The water is to dampen the sound waves. We have engine ignition, and the rocket starts to launch. Let's pause it here. This is not right. After rising no more than half a meter or so, we can immediately see the rocket tilting over. It is clear that one of the five engines has failed. Remember that Astra rockets have five electric pump-fed engines. The one that happened to be to the outside, oriented away from the launch support tower, failed almost immediately. I say almost because if an engine failed to light at all on startup, the computer should have shut them all down. But all five ignited, and launch was initiated, and the rocket lifted just a few feet. Shutting all the engines down now would have slammed the 11 tons down and ruptured the rocket, almost certainly destroying the entire complex. We don't know what went wrong but because we didn't see an engine explosion, we might assume that it was a propellant flow problem. Now we see something amazing, and this is due to incredible programming and reactive hardware. The rocket gimbals the other engines and corrects, riding itself. Then it walks itself away from the launch pad and out into the open. I don't think anyone imagined a scenario like this, but the software must be very robust for this to happen. And this gets to my estimate of the mass. If each engine puts out a thrust of 28,024 newtons, then five of them have a total of about 140,119 newtons. If one engine fails, the other four will have a total thrust of 112,095 newtons. Since we see that this is just enough power to hover the rocket, we know that the thrust to weight ratio at this point was 1 to 1, with four engines going all out. If we divide by 9.8107 meters per second squared, we get kilograms, 11,426 kilograms to be precise. This will be close to the starting mass of the rocket, meaning that with five engines burning, we were starting out with a thrust-to-weight ratio of about 1.25. Now, with only a one-to-one -one thrust to weight ratio, the rocket is hovering, burning propellant. If we have four engines, each producing 28,024 newtons of thrust, we can calculate the mass propellant flow. We couldn't find the exact figures on the Delphine, but we know the specific impulse of a Carolox engine is between 220 and 265 seconds at sea level. Let's go with 250 seconds. If we know the formula, thrust equals ejection velocity times mass propellant flow, F equals VE times M dot, and we want to know the mass propellant flow, we can divide thrust by the ejection velocity, 
m dot equals f divided by ve. Now we need the ejection velocity. We have the specific impulse, and we know the specific impulse equals the ejection velocity divided by the force of gravity on Earth. So to get the ejection velocity from the specific impulse, we rearrange our equation, is equals ve over g, to ve equals is times g. We multiply the specific impulse by the force of gravity on Earth, 250 seconds times 9.8107 meters per second squared, and this gives us about 2,453 meters per second. Dividing that into the thrust of the four engines, 112,095 newtons divided by 2,453 meters per second, and we get 45.7 kilograms per second for four engines, or about 11.43 kilograms per second per engine. Let's go back and evaluate the launch again. The other four engines are burning steadily, so 45.7 kilograms per second for all four. We start our timer. From when the engine starts to when we see the rocket starting to climb above the trees is about 15 seconds. That gives it a new mass of 10,741 kilograms, equaling a weight of 105,375 newtons, giving us a new thrust to weight ratio of about 1.064. The rocket slowly climbs. How long will it take for the rocket to burn off enough fuel to get back to a thrust to weight ratio of 1.25? If ratio equals thrust over weight, then weight equals thrust over the ratio. If the thrust of the rocket with four engines is 112,095 newtons, then the weight will have to be 89,676 newtons. If we turn that back into mass by dividing by Earth's gravity, we get a mass of 9,141 kilograms. We subtract that from our starting mass of 11,426 kilograms and get 2,285 kilograms of propellant to burn off. If we are burning 45.7 kilograms per second with four engines going, that will take about 50 seconds. And here we see the rocket starting to climb faster. It will be almost impossible for this rocket to get its payload into orbit now. It burned up far too much propellant fighting gravity drag. The higher your thrust to weight ratio, the less propellant you lose to gravity drag. That is why that for the Starship, SpaceX is sacrificing a little efficiency, dropping the specific impulse to get higher thrust on launch. The aerospace engineers have worked out that the propellant saved by escaping gravity drag is more than that lost from reduced efficiency. The Astro Rocket 3.3 gets high enough to separate, then goes into a spin and the flight is safely terminated over the Pacific Ocean. The media will report this as another failure for Astra. But in a way, this is an incredible success. When the Soviet N-1 rocket lifted off the ground, then suffered similar thrust failure and fell immediately back, it created a huge explosion, destroying the entire launch complex. The Astra 3.3 rocket engine failure could have done the same, but instead it did the best it could to get to a safe altitude and location for flight termination to occur. When the orbital Starship launches in a few weeks, it will have 28 engines. It would have to lose seven engines to suffer the same thrust loss as that experienced by Rocket 3.3. But this could easily happen. If just one Raptor explodes, it could take out six of its comrades with shrapnel. If these also explode, the rocket is doomed and will have an explosion on the launch pad that will take out most of Starbase. But if some of the engines lose propellant flow, or just one explodes and doesn't damage the others, Starship might be able to stay upright and walk itself out over the ocean, fighting to climb to a safe altitude and location. Starship could learn a lot from Astro Rocket 3.3, as we all can. Let's hope that when things go wrong, we all fight as hard to reach our destiny. Thanks for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And stay safe. At Astra Proterra.